This is video lecture number four for nuclear chemistry. Uh, it's a very quick video, although the material is important because the Regents does ask uh, questions on this. It's uses of radioisotopes. The first use, which you probably are familiar with, is radioactive dating. U-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years, an enormously uh, large amount of time. The end product is lead-206. This is a classic Regents question where they ask you, what does uranium-238 eventually decay into? So if you have a rock that weighs whatever, one gram, and half of that rock is 0.5 grams of U-238 and 0.5 grams of lead-206, then you know that that rock has gone through one half-life because it went from one gram to 0.5 grams. The oldest rock found in, with that half-life, we now know that rock would be four and a half billion years old based on the half-life of U-238. The oldest rocks found on Earth have been dated to about four billion years old. The solar system has an estimated age of 4.6 billion years based on dating meteorites. So one of the uses is to figure out how long our solar system has been around and the Earth. A second element used in dating is carbon-14. Carbon-14 has a half-life, according to Table N, of 5,715 years. Unlike U-238, carbon-14 dates organic material, and it's only good for about 40,000 years old. So radioactive dating with carbon-14 is because carbon-14 will decay once an organism dies, um, and then they can figure out how old that organism was. So, for example, fresh charcoal from a tree containing carbon-14 gives a radioactive count of 13.6 disintegrations per minute. They found prehistoric cave paintings with charcoal in it. The charcoal gave a reading of 1.7 disintegrations per minute. So from this information, date the charcoal to determine the age of the paintings. So we haven't used disintegrations per minute before, but let's just look at it in terms of half-lives. After the first half-life, 13.6 disintegrations, half of 13.6 will become 6.80. After a second half-life, disintegrations become 3.40, half of 6.8. After a third half-life, the disintegrations per minute will be 1.7. So we can see it's gone through three half-lives. So three times 5,715 will show that, that charcoal was 17,145 years old. And so the assumption is that the paintings will be 17,000 145 years old. So carbon-14, used to date once living things. U-238 is used to date much, much, much older uh, samples of rock and minerals. A second use of radioisotopes is in medicine. They're used for diagnosis, isotopes with a short half-life that are quickly eliminated from the body are used for diagnosing different medical um, disorders. 
but the Regents requires that you know I-131 is used to diagnose thyroid disorders. Also, radioisotopes are used as tracers. A tracer can be introduced. It's allowed to flow through the system. It is then looked through by some kind of monitoring device, and that can be used to determine where um, different material has gone through the object, let's say a plant. So if you want to trace how a herbicide goes through a plant, inject it with a tracer, and then monitor it and see where the herbicide ends up. The third type of use is in therapy. The Regents requires that you know gamma rays from cobalt-60 are used in cancer treatment. In industry, radiation is used in food preservation to kill things like bacteria or mold or insect eggs. Yuck! So here is a summary of isotopes and their uses, which you are um, expected to know. So I was going to do the review sheet from the uh, handouts packet, but I think we're going to do that in class. So this officially ends uh, the last lecture for Chapter 24. So we'll see you in class. Bye.